Today we're going to be discussing independent events. So we say that two events are independent if the probability of one event occurring does not affect the probability of the other occurring. So let's just say we were given events, so let E and F denote events. Right, such that the probability of E is greater than zero and the probability of F is also greater than zero. We then say that these events E and F are independent if one of the two conditions are satisfied. So if either the probability of E given that F has occurred equals to the probability of E or if the probability of F given that E has occurred is equal to the probability of F. So we have now defined the independence of two events based on um, the conditional probability. So here we're saying that the conditional probability of E given F must be equal to the probability of E occurring. And um, so here I meant to write down F. So I think I said F but wrote down E instead. So remember this is the probability of F. So either that or the second statement which says that the probability of F given that E has occurred. So this conditional probability is equal to the probability of F occurring. Right, so this is basically um, conditions that you could use to verify if two events are independent or not. So if these two events are not independent, meaning they do not satisfy these conditions, then we say that they are dependent. An example of two events that are independent would be, for example, a coin toss, so obtaining the event of uh, obtaining um, a head on a coin toss, and then obtaining, um, let's say, an, the number three on a roll of dice. So those two events are certainly independent. The probability of obtaining the head on the coin toss is independent and does not affect the probability of, uh, of obtaining um, the number three on the roll of a dice. In addition to that, so this was one important statement that I've mentioned, the second important thing to note with regards to independent events is that we have a very special multiplication law. So if you were given, right, so let's say let E1, E2 up to EN be events. Right, so we say that Right, then E1, E2, so this entire sequence of events are said to be independent, and I'm just using shorthand there, if and only if the following is satisfied, that the probability of the intersection of each of these events, so E1 intersect E2 intersect E3, so on, all the way up to and including the intersection of EN, is then equal to the product of the probabilities of each of those events, the probability of event E1 occurring being multiplied to the probability of E2 all the way up to and including the, the product of the probability of EN. Right, so this is another statement that you could also use to verify if uh, events are independent or not. And of course, given that you know that events are independent and if you needed to determine the probabilities of intersections, then this is the formula that you would then use. But in particular, we can now say, based on that formula, given events A and B, which are independent, then the probability of A intersection B will then be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Right, so important things to know. So here are two sets of formulae that you need to know. Right, so the, these were formulae involving conditional probabilities and here we have a statement about intersections of independent events. 
All right, let's look at a brief example. So we are told that four cards have to be randomly drawn from a deck of 52 cards. And what's happening is that this is done with replacement. The question is, find the probability that the cards uh, which are chosen, remember we are choosing four, will be a king, a queen, a jack, and a heart. So those must be the four cards chosen, and it must be chosen in that order. Now the key <clears throat> piece of information in here is that this is occurring with replacement. So that means, so replacement now implies that at each draw, we still select a card from the original deck of 52. Because if we were do completing draw 1, if I was selecting the first card, I will select it, record what it is, and then put it back into the deck, and then select the second, and repeat the procedure. So at each draw, you are replacing the card. You're putting it back into the deck. So that means that at each draw, you are essentially working with the same deck of cards, and therefore this does not affect the outcome of any other draw. So uh, picking a card in the first draw does not affect what's happening in the second draw, the third, or the fourth draw. So as a result, this implies that these are independent events. So each draw is independent. And because we know that this is now an independent, these are independent events that are occurring. Independent. Okay, got it. Right, so let's let uh, K denote the event that we've drawn a king. Right, so K denotes king, Q denotes queen, J denotes jack, and H denotes a heart, selecting a heart. So essentially what we know, we know that each of these events are now going to be independent because each draw is independent, so we want the probability of K intersection Q intersection J intersection H, the probability of selecting a king, queen, jack, and a heart. And based on the multiplication law that I just mentioned to you in the previous slide, this is just going to equal to the probability of selecting a king being multiplied to the probability of selecting a queen times the probability of selecting a jack times the probability of selecting a heart. Right, so we now need to write down the respective probabilities. So how many kings do we have in a deck of 52 cards? We have four kings. So there are only four possible ways in which you could select a king. And the total sample space is made up of 52. And how many ways can we select a queen? Once again, there's four ways. Remember, it is four because replacement occurs at, uh, in each step as well. Uh, so this is 52 times, and sorry, divided by 52. And now we've got the probability of selecting a jack. And how many ways can you select a jack? We have four uh, jacks in each deck. So once again, 4 over 52. And probability of selecting a heart. The heart is a suit, so there are 13 possible hearts in a deck of 52 cards. So that's 13 over 52. And what I was trying to mention before is that because there's replacement, um, the sample space remains unchanged in each successive selection. So therefore, it's always 52 in the denominator. Right, and then multiplying this, you could put this into your calculator and simplify, and you will get a final answer of 1 divided by 8,788.